All right, great. Uh, so I think the theme has been uh, pretty much said. I was hearing what some of the other um, companies have been doing in this space, uh, some presentations that went before me. And uh, I think we're all talking essentially about the same thing. And as a customer, as our partners, uh, as our distributors, you are in a unique position to see what are some of the changes that are shaping the internet of the future? Uh, what are some of the changes that are driving this world of hyper growth that we are currently living in? So the presentation today that I'm going to be covering is the future of networking in a cloud connected world. And how do we accelerate the cloud journey with Cisco? So if you look at the world that we live in today, a lot has changed. Uh, a lot has changed that uh, the last flight that I took in a plane was almost a year and a half ago. And I know that some of the countries have been traveling, some, some are bigger countries than Singapore. So people have been able to travel a little bit more than what we've been able to do in Singapore. But essentially, life came to a standing still for many of us, and all of us have been impacted, our families have been impacted, our friends have been impacted in different ways. But that apart, we've also been impacted in the way we work. Uh, a few years ago, if you would have asked me, people working from home, what does that mean? Why do companies allow people from working from home? And while there were cost savings uh, on the real estate side, <clears throat> there was always this thing that it's a first world problem. Uh, you would not be seeing third world countries or you'd not be seeing developing countries to be able to uh, use technology the same way to work from home uh, that some of the other countries were seeing. But uh, that all changed with uh, the pandemic. And we now live in a world where we've seen different countries emerge out of the pandemic, some countries still being in the pandemic. And the way we do work has changed, the way we connect and work has changed, and the way we consume technology has changed as well. So essentially what we're trying to do and what other companies are trying to do in this space as well is to address some of the pandemic challenges, but also address some of the challenges which we've seen that the applications now are living in a multi-cloud environment. So we had a private cloud, we heard about a public cloud. Now we talk about a hybrid cloud. We also talk about a multi-cloud. So what is this multi-cloud? Multi-cloud is essentially when I have my applications distributed in containers, in microservices, not just on a private cloud or a public cloud, but a bunch of public clouds. And then how do I push a single unified policy across these clouds to make sure that from my user standpoint, if a user from Singapore is connecting, he connects to the cloud that is closest to him with the same set of security policies, then somebody who's say connecting from Philippines or connecting from Indonesia or connecting from America. So that is what we are trying to address in this world that we live in today as applications have really changed the game on how we work and how we consume technology. So before we talk about what are some of the architectures that we need to address some of the challenges that we're seeing in this new world, we also need to take a look at what is the problem that we're trying to solve. So I used to be an IP telephony guy a few years ago. I think in 2006, I used to work in a company called Avaya. They used to make uh, IP phones and communication PBXs. They're still there. And that's still their primary business, including uh, some video technology that they're doing as well. But at that particular point of time, IP telephony was like a very big thing. And it used to, I remember, take me a team of 10 people, three or four days, or maybe even a month, uh, depending on how large the project was, to be able to configure a communication manager. Uh, you know, just to get all the things, moving parts up and running, connecting the PBX to the PSTN so that you could get dial tone and have those big phones. And uh, that was a world that we were living in at that particular point of time. Now, just day before yesterday, I went to Amazon Cloud. I configured, you know, the free tier uh, uh, or Linux server. Uh, and then with that Linux server, I was able to deploy cloud PBX in less than 10 minutes. So in less than 10 minutes, I was able to do with the help of Kubernetes that was able to create those containers with the help of inbuilt security, I was able to create something very similar 
not exactly the same, but something very similar in a matter of 10 minutes, what I was doing uh, in like four days with team of 10 people. And that's just, you know, for a very small project. So that is how much uh, has changed in the last few years with the power of applications now moving uh, to cloud. More and more applications will now be cloud native. They would now be monolithic applications. So when applications are moving to cloud, A, it's providing us ease of use, better consumption models in terms of having these applications hosted from the cloud. And we also decentralizing. There's no single point of failure. I can have multiple clouds, multiple instances of your EC2 running, uh, EC2 service running in the cloud, and you can orchestrate everything. But what does that mean from the world of networking? And because Cisco is in many ways synonym with networks. We were the ones who invented a router. So what does that mean when this world is changing? How are we positioned in terms of Cisco to be able to help our users when they're going in this transformation to address some of these challenges that I just highlighted? And it begins by first understanding how did network connectivity look like before we had these cloud born applications. And essentially what we had was that we used to have the main headquarters where you would have your exchange server, your all your web application development, everything would be essentially hosted in this main site. And then you would have your branch sites connecting over MPLS uh, back to your main site. And you will also have your users who would use things like AnyConnect to come back to your main site and then go out to the internet. And so what you could do was that that meant I could have a centralized network policy and I could also have a centralized security policy. <clears throat> now this centralization no longer works because essentially not only does it add latency, it also is very difficult to manage because let's say I'm a user and I'm based out of Singapore why do I want to go to Philippines if that's my main headquarters and then access Microsoft Azure if that's where my cloud applications are hosted? Why don't I go to the Azure servers that are natively hosted in Singapore itself? So those are the, so if you look at the right, uh, what has changed is that with SaaS, software as a service, with infrastructure as a service, with PaaS, there's so many uh, as a service models that are growing firewall as a service as well. So we are now moving to a place where we don't want to bottleneck, uh, bottleneck our network by bringing the applications to the central site. We want these applications to be able to directly access the internet and directly go to the cloud. That's all good and uh, looks great, but that does open us to security gaps in our protection because essentially all your security infrastructure, your firewall, your IPS, your uh, anti-malware solutions, your email security gateways, your web security gateways, everything was traditionally positioned in this main site. And this main site model no longer works. So that is why it is important that we trying to look at how do we allow these networking teams and security teams who are currently struggling to plug these gaps, to plug these holes that we are seeing in this new network, in this new connectivity model. So as users are connecting to applications and data, they are going to experience poor application experience while accessing cloud app. We want to reduce the complexity and provide multiple cloud providers. And we also need to provide them with application visibility and have a lack of, uh, right now we have a lack of end-to-end -end granular visibility on the application performance. The second part for us is to make sure that we are also providing against evolving threat vectors. So if you've been following the news, it's very interesting when you see gas pipelines being of entire countries being closed because somebody hacked into a gas pipeline and is now asking for some bitcoins. So if they can do it to a nation, if they can do it to a country, and that also the, one of the most powerful and most advanced nations in the world, imagine what's gonna happen when they try to attack small and medium businesses or small enterprise or even large enterprises. So we need to be able to have visibility. You know, if I just think that, okay, I'm gonna host everything on an Amazon cloud or I'm gonna host everything on a Microsoft cloud or a Google cloud for that matter, and let them take care of my security. A, I don't get uniform policy. B, I don't get application visibility. Why is application visibility important? If somebody's connecting to, let's say I 
branch out all of my internet traffic uh, from the Google Cloud using their VPN service. If somebody is browsing YouTube and he's getting the same uh, quality of service than somebody who is, let's say, doing a development program for the company, I would want to prioritize the traffic for the developer. But unless I have that visibility to applications and data, unless I have a zero trust policy for security, uh, our old approaches to networking and security are simply not going to work. And that brings me to the next slide. And that talks about that in today's cloud centric world, we need to redefine the need for the new services edge, new cloud edge. We call it SASE. This has been a term that has been labeled by Gartner. So a lot of uh, uh, other companies would refer to this term as well. It's an industry standard, but essentially we wanna have a secure access services edge to the cloud. Now, what this means is pretty, uh, it's about combining three C's. How do we combine networking and security functions in the cloud? How do we have a single cloud access security broker? And how do we enforce a single pane of glass in terms of policies for net ops, for cloud ops, for DevOps? So today when everything is moving to cloud, having that visibility of what is happening inside the cloud is important. Having one uniform policy to be able to push that is important. Leveraging our service providers is important because that's the last mile. And then how we can even have caching services, uh, you know, because if my data center is in another country, can we work with service providers to make sure that we can put some caching servers in the local pop as well, not just in uh, the local country, uh, to give you a better access. So that is what the story of SASE is all about. And our vision as why we are uniquely positioned and what our vision is that we want to bring in the best in class networking, client connectivity, security capabilities into a single subscription service. So the unique position that Cisco finds itself in is that we are a security player. We are a collaboration player. We are a networking player as well. So essentially, by having a single pane of glass, I am able to manage and monitor all the building blocks of a SASE uh, framework, of a SASE workflow. Uh, and not only that, not only from a technical perspective, we are able to bring these technologies together, we are also able to then use commercial models to make sure that from a billing standpoint, the customer sees a single bill uh, again, from a pay as you go kind of consumption model of how much he's incurring for all of these services. Now, many of these services that you're going to see uh, when I'm talking talking about products in the following slides are essentially um, cloud hosted uh, pay as you go kind of services uh, that you can do. I just want to make sure that right now you guys can still see my presentation and my video because I do see a connecting on my screen. So I just want to make sure that I still have you guys. Yes, sir. Uh, so far on our end, yes. Okay, and you can see my video as well, or is yes, sir. It... Okay, yeah. great. So sorry about that. <laughs> so some uh, uh, connectivity issues. Uh, I'm. I just want to make sure that you guys are on a Cisco network. <laughs> but uh, let's just talk about. So what does this uh, vision, Cisco's vision for SASE looks like? And when I say this is Cisco's vision, uh, please rest assured that we do work with other vendors as well. Uh, so it's not just that if you're born with the networking piece from Cisco, can you? take security please from another vendor. Yes, you can. But are there benefits, inherent benefits, not only from a billing perspective, consumption perspective, but also from management and monitoring perspective to go with a single vendor? We truly believe there are. And in many ways, uh, most of our security services today are a bouquet of vendors that we've acquired over the years. So whether it's Duo, whether it's Umbrella, these were not like native uh, Cisco companies. These were not in-house. These were companies that we acquired that were best in the security solutions that they were offering at that particular point of time. So what we bring uh, in our architecture, our vision for SASE is that we take the power of Cisco networking and with the underlying layer being SD-WAN. So we take not just the, so what does SD-WAN mean? It means that we take our network which was inherently a neighbor by neighbor configuration, which was pretty static. 
and we almost make it an application aware and an application defined network where you have a controller that can push policy in real time and optimize uh, your applications. Uh, it is programmable. So we do expose our APIs, REST API, and then you can use programming languages to write uh, programs to the network. And network is no longer a static engine that you simply configure and forget. Now we are talking about visibility. We are talking about uh, titration. We are talking about uh, how do we have telemetry from a network. And by using machine learning and getting all this data together, we are able to then make real time changes to our networks and not only do last mile optimization, we are also able to do middle mile optimization. We are able to do segmentation uh, and we are able to do public and private cloud on ramp. Uh, SLA based performance routing uh, is something that we are able to do as well. And we are able to provide site to site connectivity with application visibility and application visibility. I keep hopping that again and again. Uh, it is very important uh, because applications would get different preferential uh, treatment based on what those policies are. So it is very important that we treat traffic differently, video traffic differently than voice traffic. What is also important is that by using technologies like MaxSec, we are able to not only do layer three encryption, which everybody offers today, but we're also able to do layer two encryption so that not only is your IP network perfect, uh, protected, even your uh, layer two uh, frames are protected as well. So that is what we are trying to offer in the networking piece when people are directly connecting to the cloud. But then if we come and talk about security piece, firstly, you know, by the virtue of being in the networking, there is a lot of network policy like encrypted traffic analysis that we can do within the networking domain. But then when you extend that with our security domain, with our secure web gateways, uh, with Cisco's firewalls, uh, cloud access security broker, which is an important component of the SASE vision with our leadership uh, in zero trust network access with our trust sec framework with our remote browser isolation and workload security. We are able to then marry these two things together over uh, our monitoring and management, uh, bring the power of Cisco's uh, uh, cloud edge and then being able to provide connectivity to SaaS, IaaS, PaaS, and various clouds and have some preferential routes to some of these clouds as well. So that is what we are able to provide. And our mantra is the three C's, connect, control, converge. We are the biggest vendor when it comes to the net networking footprint of SD-WAN. Uh, we have the largest routing footprint, not only for enterprise, but also service providers. And as you would see in the second phase of this presentation, service providers are very important for us as well. Uh, from a control standpoint, uh, we have cloud uh, access security broker. We have firewall as a service. We have zero trust network access. Uh, so we have various uh, controllers, uh, various products that gives you that control. And finally, converge. Uh, we want to integrate uh, not just the connect part, but the control part together and give you single consumption models, uh, ability to monitor this and ability to be in the unique position of being uh, the leading vendor in all these three areas. So let's double click and look at what these three C, what these three C's mean. So connect uh, powered by Meraki and Umbrella, depending on the use case, depending on the customer, uh, we would be able to provide you with the industry's leading uh, software defined van. And not only the software defined van, if it's an enterprise, we can even have that same security groups that we've defined and the same set of policies that we've defined with your software defined access as well. Uh, we also use remote access with any connect and duo. So currently I'm using my any connect VPN uh, to make sure that my traffic is encrypted. I'm using IPsec and with duo, we are using uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, before duo, we used to, uh, you know, we used to say trust, but verify. But the new mantra is that never trust always verify. So we want to make sure that with uh, the right MFA tools, we are able to identify the identity of the user and then push policies based on those identities. From a control standpoint, we have cloud security. In cloud security, we have umbrella, which is our web-based secure web access gateway. And then we have firewalls, we have DNS security, we have cloud access security broker. And then we have 
zero trust network access with Cisco's Duo. Again, coming back to the point that we want to make sure that not only are we capturing the connectivity piece, we are also capturing the control piece. And the way we converge this is that this is all available from a single vendor as a single offer uh, as an integrated solution. And we also recently acquired a company called Thousand Eyes, which gives you observability. It's almost like a Google Maps across your enterprise to see where all the traffic is being routed. So we have that underlying layer uh, that you can extend uh, onto these three Cs that gives you observability of what's going on inside your network. So this is what Cisco's architecture can do uh, for you. Uh, it is important that you'll be able to see and list some of the things that we are in a unique position to draw. So you can connect and securely access. So we talked about the pandemic in the beginning. And it was important that we look at how our lives have changed. And while when we talk about the pandemic, we talk about collaboration solutions like WebEx and how you can work from home. Uh, one thing that we often miss is that if the connectivity is not secure, then if you're just using public internet to access services, now you have exposed your organization to malware, uh, to man in the middle attacks, to so many things uh, that bad actors can do uh, in order to compromise your network. So while pandemic may be uh, behind us in a short while, hopefully, fingers crossed, but it is completely changed the way people work. Uh, a lot of people are now looking at would I be returning to office full time or would I be working three days from home or how do I manage my kids? And uh, so those are the kind of questions that the new world would be slightly different uh, than the world that we left. And hopefully in better ways, uh, we always as human species rebuild better together. So, but that would mean that we would have to have new technologies uh, in order to address that. We would also have to optimize for performance. What is the fastest, most reliable, secure path to access the cloud. And the path that I'm taking right now may not be the best optimized tomorrow. There may be more network traffic. So with technologies like segment routing, working with our service providers, having preferential routes, it is important that we optimize our performance. We also want to deliver the best app experience, and that comes to end-to-end visibility. So with NBAR2, network-based access recognition, we are application recognition, we are able to look at the header of the packet and being able to recognize what the application is and then prioritize that application based on the policies uh, that uh, we've defined. You know, How do you want to queue that traffic? How do you want to police that traffic? Which traffic needs to drop if the link is for? Those are the kind of policies that you can define when you want to deliver the best app experience. You want to adopt zero trust network access. Uh, this comes from duo multi-factor authentication. How do I not just use a password, but then maybe use your mobile phones or your apps, et cetera, to verify the identity of the user. And we want to essentially make businesses more agile. So in today's world, uh, spinning off a container in a cloud simply takes minutes. And then we need to then bring not just one cloud, but multiple clouds together. And we need to have one uniform policy. And you cannot be invisible to what is happening inside the cloud you need to be able to deploy these services inside uh, the cloud, right? So uh, you get the bare minimum SLAs if you just go with cloud native security. You need to think about if I have four or five different clouds, which is going to be very true. And I have a private uh, cloud as well. How do I have one unified policy across these different data centers? How do I have one unified access control strategy. And this is not just coming from us as Cisco. This is something that Gartner believes as well. So our skills need to change. Uh, you know, those of us who have been in IT for a long period of time, uh, we've been used to command line. We've been used to configuring devices, BGP, et cetera, router by router. And then uh, that those skills need to change because in this hyper-connected world of the multi-cloud, uh, things are changing too quickly and we need to keep pace with what's happening. And why is Cisco uniquely positioned? We are the largest SD-WAN provider in the world. Uh, we are defending 100% of the Fortune 100 companies. 
and we are the leaders of the zero trust uh, domain for the last two years. So not only are we in all the three pillars or all the three ingredients or uh, what, what I call the secret sauce for SASE, we are also uh, the only vendor that's in the unique position to offer this all three in-house. Not that we cannot work, like I said, we you can as a customer, you have the options of uh, mixing and matching, but mixing and matching uh, brings their own set of complexities as well. So if if there is a Cisco customer out there, there is benefits of integrating it across a single vendor. So that was my quick take on the networking of the future. The second topic that I really quickly wanted to touch about, and I know I have 10 minutes, but it's 5G. And what does 5G mean for all of us, apart from the conspiracy theories that go on on the internet? So there, there's a lot more to 5G. Uh, and a lot of people come and ask me, like, what is Cisco going to do in 5G? You know, you have a phone, uh, you have uh, your towers, you have your service providers. What is Cisco's role in 5G? And a lot of those people, don't understand that RAN or radio access network, uh, your base stations, your towers, uh, your endpoints, uh, the modems on them are just one component of 5G. Uh, there's a packet core uh, where we are <laughs> in a unique position of working with our service providers, providing them terabits of bandwidths and um, multiple zettabytes. And I don't even know, uh, you know how much uh, uh, throughput uh, these service providers are using because it increases every day we have new sets of transceivers that can go 400 gigs uh, zr plus so this is a very changing landscape and cisco has a very big role to play uh, by being the best in packet core technologies best in aggregate technologies and that's why it's important to understand what does 5g mean for us and for our customers so if you look at the mobile traffic growth uh, i have a seven year old at home right it's easy. He asked me, you know, when did I get my first cell phone? And, you know, when, why didn't I have an iPhone when I was 10 years old? And it's very difficult to explain to him that there were no cell phones when I was 10 years old. And this world has seen such a big change that every one year, we double or four times quadruple the amount of traffic that goes on to the internet. But while we quadruple the amount of traffic that goes out to the internet, just keep it outside. Nice. Sorry about that. Some problems are working from home. <laughs> so while we could ruple the traffic uh, every four years, we do not uh, have four times the number of resources. We don't have four times the number of uh, IT budgets that the companies are giving us. And it's not just about connectivity. It's also the demand for new services. And also we've been talking about the cloud and move to cloud platforms. Now 5G is something that will enable us to put 5G gateways uh, on remote sites, 5G gateways uh, to allow users to be able to connect to these cl cloud platforms uh, in a much higher bandwidth, much higher throughput, much higher density than they would have otherwise in the previous years. So let's just talk about what does cloud scale mobile internet mean? And what does it mean in terms of uh, what we wanna do in the future? So if you look at, from a connectivity standpoint, we've been talking about network platforms before that were just scaled for subscriptions, devices, and locations. This is your LTE network, right? I just need connectivity so that I can browse something on the internet. But now we are talking about gigabit throughput or more than gigabit throughput with low latency onto your endpoints in your hands. So that enables experiences like IR, VR, telemedicine, uh, tele-education. Uh, and again, going back to the previous SASE model, we also wanna talk about security. We also wanna talk about what does it mean for service providers? So imagine you are a service provider. You've been very used to the things on the left. You know, you had a RAN network, radio access network, you had base stations, uh, you had your packet core, you had your aggregation layer. Uh, based on Cisco IOS XR or ASR or Cisco 8000. And you had very limited cross-domain, cross-vendor automation, and this was all purpose-built. So it was a very static connectivity that we used to provide. But now with Cisco 5G, you would see that this talk about open RAN, virtual RAN, so the radio access networks are changing. 
And with those networks being changing, we are taking the brain of those networks away and putting that in the aggregation layer. So what is happening is that 5G is changing the way we had been working in the past. And we need to have a connected domain that works across vendors. If you give me one second, my son is actually playing the audio very loud outside. Let me just go and quickly tell him to reduce the volume. Aram, can you reduce the volume? I'm in a presentation. Sorry about that. So, uh, no problem. No problem. Yeah, I think we're all facing this at home. Uh, you know, they have remote school right now and uh, till Wednesday. And I'm on their classes in the morning, and it's a mess in the house. But coming back, 5G <laughs> is going to enable. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, so 5G is going to enable us those experiences. And we want to not just have a secure network, a simple network. We want to have better experiences. And we want to be able to have products that allow us to manage, monitor all this with a single pane of glass. And with Cisco, if you see, we want a unified platform. We play a very big role in the multi-cloud and in the IP core layer. We are also going to play an increasingly important role in the 5G edge in the access and the aggregation layer and of course in the client layer that is where you know you'll have your cell phones you'll have your open ran your vran that's the stage of how the clients connect onto the access network but once they connect to these multi gigabit access platforms uh, that is where cisco's uh, power comes into place that is where we can start pushing policies managing these devices with a single pane of glass and the way this works is that the the requirements for a service provider are very different than that of an enterprise customer. Even though they are large enterprise customers like Deutsche Bank, uh, we are able to then use some of these services with them. So we have a converged core. Uh, so traditionally, we used to have a separate IP core, and then you have a separate uh, optical uh, networking for your DWDM connections, which is cross sea fiber cables that have been laid for thousands of kilometers connecting North America to Asia, to Europe, et cetera. So we've been able to now bring that optical connectivity onto the IP core, the routers itself. Uh, so we have IP over WDM, we have the uh, Cisco Converge uh, routing system, we have uh, ASRs uh, that have been there with iOS, iOS XR. So we have the ability to use and automate some of these services. So network slicing would be able to allow you to slice your network, service automation. How do you configure segment routing? How do you configure eVPNs with few simple clicks? And to be able to have edge distribution, virtual scaling, security and services baked on to the service providers uh, 5C network. That is what we're doing. Underlying products are pretty simple. So if you look at the converged core, Cisco is, uh, you know, we have the fastest uh, industry uh, service provider grade uh, switching uh, with uh, routers with terabits of throughputs. We have network slicing that allows you to do segment routing, which allows you to do eVPNs and provide you the best path per application uh, and op path optimization. We also have service automation uh, with Cisco Crosswork, which is our equivalent of the DNA center that we do for the enterprise. So you have full visibility and not only for Cisco's own products, you also can push policy to third party products by using open APIs. It's a multi vendor, it's multiple domain. Uh, we also have not only that, we also have network services orchestration as well. Edge distribution, unified access for fiber licensed, unlicensed virtual scaling for cloud native uh, container location and security. We want to have hardened end-to-end -end infrastructure. We want to have the power of Talos, which is industry's leading threat protection team with over 250 plus individuals working 24 cross seven to identify the threats that are happening inside the network. Not only that, 5G means that we are able to bring newer technologies onto our network. So imagine today when you go and you browse YouTube, uh, you go to a Google Cloud somewhere, and sometimes the experience is good, sometimes the experience is not so good. Especially, let's say everybody's watching the same football match. So, if somebody is delivering that uh, content, uh, the CDN content delivery, if we are able to have some caching service closer to you, or if things like cloud gaming, you know, there was this whole thing about Google bringing cloud gaming. And the fundamental problem with cloud gaming was that if there is a big latency, 
And if you're into gaming, then you know latency is going to kill you. Uh, you know, if, especially let's say you're playing a first person shooter and somebody sees you 300 milliseconds before you can even see them and click your mouse, uh, the game is over for you before it even starts. So things like cloud gaming now become a reality by having caching servers that you can put in the pop of your service provider. So these pop would also become like mini clouds and where you can deliver these services from. So those are some of the things that we are seeing seeing uh, in terms of the changes in 5G and what Cisco can deliver. Uh, we again are trying to solve challenges of our customers. So we have two offers. One is the remote, secure remote worker. How do we allow employees that are working from home? Uh, so the challenges are, of course, we uh, have a security loopholes when people connect from home. So today that we saw that how Cisco can help some of these problems is our 3C framework. Uh, we use the power of Cisco's umbrella, which is our web security gateway. We use Duo for multi-factor uh, authentication. We use AnyConnect for our VPN. And then we can even use our collaboration technologies like WebEx to allow people uh, to work from home securely. Because again, security is about least common denominator. And so you are as secure as the least secure device inside your network. The second use case that we have is secure edge. So for your remote offices, uh, when you have an organization with uh, many pops, you want to make sure that these secure locations can connect securely using SD-WAN back onto uh, the cloud and then access the cloud remotely from their side instead of coming back to the main site that they used to. So there we want to use the power of Cisco's SD-WAN. And again, from a control standpoint, from a security standpoint, we want to use the power of Cisco's umbrella and Duo and converging from a consumption model, converging in terms of integration, management, deployment, and having a single pane of glass across some of these devices and some of these services. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, what we are doing for the secure edge, some of the products that we see. Uh, and the cloud is, of course, we are using all of these to access the internet, to access your SaaS applications, and to access the private and the public cloud. So with that, I think I'm on the top of my time, but if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to us. I think this is a very big journey, not just for Cisco, but for our customers as well. And it's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take its time. Uh, it's gonna take uh, companies a few years to get onto this roadmap. But the thing is that as long as we start building on those basic building blocks, we will all get there to be able to have a better future uh, where things and applications can be de deployed securely and accessed securely. Uh, in matter of days, as opposed to matter of months that it used to take in the past. So with that, we come to the end of this presentation and I want to thank you all for listening.